Oh boy. Me too. Me too. Live and learn has become my philosophy. As the 50s started, I remember crawling under the dining room table one Sunday. We had a lot of company. And I discovered a butter knife. And I inserted it into the slot in the wall. <laughs> I had no words to tell anybody what happened. Live and learn. When I was six years old, I was holding on to the pole for dear life as the train rattled along. And I looked up and I mouthed the words on the poster. Take the long Island Railroad. I was very pleased with myself. I was puzzled, though, that the grown-ups would say Long Island Railroad. Just, oh, in the third grade, one full day, they'd let us out early. My plan was just to creep into the apartment, get a little snack, change my clothes, and play ball with my friends. My father worked at night, so he usually slept during the day. As soon as I opened the refrigerator, I saw the makings of a ketchup sandwich. Oh, boy. And then I heard noises from my parents' bedroom that I had never heard before. I closed the door, and I crept out of that flat as quietly as I could, confused and even a little scared. Live and learn. In the mid-60s, I was as far away from Brooklyn as I had ever been. I was the kitchen boy at Camp Manitou, an all-girls sleepover camp in Central Valley, Orange County, New York. My older sister came up unexpectedly and handed me an official letter. Greetings from Uncle Sam. I was drafted. He even scotch taped a subway token on top to ensure that I would get to the induction center. Live and learn. So I went from the Garden of Eden to serving my time in hell in sh very short order. When I came home in the 70s, for a year and a half, I walked around like a zombie. Now they call that PTSD. I finally landed a betting clerk job with New York City Off-Track Betting. And I started to go to Brooklyn College at night. And I took my mother. Well, it took longer than usual, but we went to each other's graduations. Me a single guy, and she a mother of seven. One Sunday morning, I decided to take the train to the Cloisters. I never made it. Five muggers jumped me. One of them stabbed me in the wrist. They fled out the train at uh, Clark Street just as the doors closed. Blood was spurting. A stranger helped stop the bleeding. Live and learn. In 1981, I went on a OTB-sponsored fishing trip. I stayed home the next day, having caught a cold but no fish. I was awakened to my mother's Please, Stavros, Stavros, please wake up, Stavros. My father had suffered a stroke. I moved out of their American dream home after his one year memorial. My first apartment was a walk up opposite the old Russian tea room. My share was $320 a month. By accident, I found out I was paying the entire rent. <laughs> Live and learn. It's gone now, replaced by this monster of a building called 157, where apartments are approaching the hundred million dollar mark. In the 90s, I had firmly became part of the establishment. I was on the board of trustees of my mother's church. I went to their annual dance at the Hollywood Terrace in Bensonhurst. I arrived late, and as soon as I reached my assigned table number 12, the music stopped and the lights went on. My mother had collapsed on the dance floor. She had suffered an aneurysm. She passed away a few 
days before that Christmas. By the end of the decade, I had exchanged bachelorhood for the married life. My wife for life, Joanne, is a theater person. Just as we got into the new millennium, 9-11 happened. I volunteered at the Family Assistance Center at the West Side Pier. Now, there's some days I think I've managed to endure. And then there's some days I believe I have prevailed. You can learn. 